This is a router milling machine. Scanning the whole thing to show you everything at it first. There's a foot pedal on the bottom. And I'm going to keep the upper part up here to show you most of the operation on the top. The table itself has 30 inches of movement right to left. The table itself is 42 inches long. And then, yeah, front to back, you can have 18 inches of movement. This crank operates the head, raises and lowers the head. As you can see, I have several, I don't know, maybe you can see, maybe you can't, but there's several threaded inserts on this table where I can clamp either clamps or guides or fences or whatever I need. The foot pedal I showed you at the beginning operates the plunge feature on this. I just set push down on it. There's up to five inches of travel that it can uh, reach. There's stop collars on it up here. If I want to go to a certain point, I can uh, adjust the stop collar to hit that certain point. I actually have a measuring device on the side here where I can set these collars to hit that measurement that I need. The head itself has three clamps on it in the back. I can loosen these up and I can actually tilt this up to 45 degrees. And I clamp them back down. And while it's at an angle, well, you can plunge it at an angle. Let me move this back up a little bit. But you can plunge and you're working at an angle. This works great for round objects or bowls or many other different things. Okay. Tilt this back up to where it goes. I'll clean it goes down in a minute. The uh, There's also a couple of uh, round tables that I use for turning round objects. This is one of the larger ones. It just sits on here. I can slide on there wherever I want. And I have several thread inserts on that. And I just put it on there and spin it, make round objects up to, actually you can go up to probably 30 inches. You can overhang it a little bit. Just by moving this down, you can get farther out on the on the edge. So like that, and then for smaller stuff like this here, I have a very small wheel here, and I have a, a rod thread here. If I'm doing a, a a small object that actually has a center hole, I'll use this. And I'll just put a uh, pin in one of the holes. And that'll be my center point. Just drop it on that and clamp it to that. And I can spin it right on there for smaller objects. And speaking of this pin, I have a few different places for it. This is a pin router now. What I do is get this pin directly over center of the bit, but I get the same size bit as wherever the pin is. And I have stop features on the table. I can actually lock the table for moving this way, and I also have them down here. So it's locked, the table can't move, so this way you can do pin routing. And I believe that's about it. In the next video, I'll show you a couple of things that you can do with it. And, uh, see what you think.